Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Liliana Mumi. Happy birthday, Liliana Mumi. Can't believe she's 20 years old now. Wow, she's grown, all grown up. Yeah, just, she's still really cute. Oh, you're beautiful. Yeah. And she's old to be hot. Yeah, you know, Twinkle is uh, Twinkle is my most favorite character that she's that she has ever played. Mhm. Mm oh, Twinkle's a good character. Mom, do you think was Twinkle too girly for you when you watched Tickletown Heroes? No, no. I'm okay with her being girly. She wasn't girly in a bad way, you know. She was um, a strong, well-run character, as cartoons go. She. Uh, she was outspoken. She wasn't um, girly in, in any kind of in any kind of negative way, um, right? She wasn't meek or submissive. Yeah. She uh, spoke spoke her mind. Yeah. Um, whatever, all those you know, used her imagination. All those wild plans she had. Yeah, um, yeah no, she wasn't too girly. She's not the right. I mean, an appropriate amount of girly. Yeah, yeah. she's girly, but not like, you know. Um, Changing herself for to be a certain way for guys or or anything or to fit a certain way of being a girl. She just was herself. That's just her natural girliness, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I know. She's super cute and also very uh, smart and imaginative, mm -hmm. just like Liliana well, yeah, in real life. I haven't met her in real life, but you you've seen videos, right? Yeah, I know. Okay. I know that blue, purple, and pink are all. Some of Twinkle's and Liliana's most favorite colors. Okay, cool. Okay. Now, how do you feel about Twinkle being the only girl in an on ensemble of uh, four kids, and you know the other three are boys, and one is her brother? Because Gina Davis is worries that pe some people like Gina Davis worry that it could send the wrong message to her daughters about about boys being more important than girls, and so on and so forth, and what have you. Oh, you know, that could be a problem if the characters were otherwise balanced and given equal time, I suppose. But in her case, she's like the strongest, most memorable uh, character. So I think she, uh, more memorable than the boys. So I think she has enough, like, I don't know, charisma or force of character or lines, a number of lines or something to easily balance out the other three. So you don't, it doesn't feel like Oh, there aren't enough girls here, because she takes up at least half of the, I don't know, like sort of kid presence. Yes, I agree. But uh, you know, I think uh, you know, mm -hmm. I think uh, she, you know, I think she makes a really, I, th I think Twinkle makes a really, a really perfect foil to her, her brother Wayne. In, wait, to I think Twinkle makes a really perfect foil to her brother Wayne. You know, she, you know, Twinkle is. Uh, you know, Twinkle is very uh, energetic and outgoing, and uh, you know mm. Wayne is uh, very shy and meek. Okay, yeah, they're right. They're siblings, but they're very different. Yeah. Yeah, that's what makes them memorable to watch. Mm-hmm. That makes them really good. The damn characters. Yeah, and they're like they're individuals. They're not like, well, this is a boy stereotype and this is a girl stereotype. Yeah. But isn't but uh, isn't Twinkle? A girl's stereotype? No, because this, the stere and the stereotype, the boys are doing most of the talking and the girls are just letting the boys talk. Oh, good point. Yeah. The girls are, the girls would be, are the shy ones in, in the stereotype. The girls are like, you know, maybe they're not shy when boys aren't around, but they're going to like defer to guys and, and be submissive to guys when the guys are around. And, um, but yeah, no, it's not like that with uh, Lily and her brother. You mean Liliana? I mean Liliana and her brother, yeah. Twinkle and her brother. Yeah. Twinkle and her brother. I mean, Twinkle and her brother. I don't know what Liliana's real life brother if she has one. Well, she does. Oh, cool. Yeah, but Seth anyway, Moomy. Seth Moomy. Okay, so I don't know what Seth is like, but in the show, Liliana and her brother in the in the show, Hilltown Heroes. Yeah, they're not following the stereotypes. That's good. Um. You know, uh, what do you, do you think Yubi and Kip's characters are too similar? Because to me, I always thought, you know, I could identify some unique personality traits in Wayne Twinkle, Fran, and Pizza Guy, but mm -hmm. Kip and Yubi always felt like the same character to me whenever I watched them. The only difference I can actually 
I can actually identify between them is that Yubi is into that Yubi likes animals and nature science more, and Kip likes uh, rob likes uh, robots and uh, rocket science more. Oh yeah, they didn't write enough for those two. They didn't give they didn't flesh out their characters enough. I mean, it seems like like that um, Twinkle and her brother, the main kids, and those two just are also rans. They just also happen to be there to have more than two kids, I guess. Well, yeah, I always, well, yeah, I actually think, I actually think, uh, Twinkle and Wayne are the female and male lead to Higley Town heroes, or at least the, the closest that show has to them, to such a thing. Yeah, it's, it's like, an, it's a, it seems kind of like an ensemble, but yeah, they're more prominent characters than the other two kids, yeah. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. You know, I always, you know, Wayne and I always both, uh, had a personal affinity for toast. <laughs> Can't toast. Um, were, when you were a kid, were you more like a Twinkle or Wayne or, or both of them? Well, um, I was shy like Wayne, but I was also imaginative and not afraid to speak up like Twinkle, like, you know, in class, I'd volunteer and so... Yeah, I guess I've, I'm a mix of those two, and, you know, think about it. It gives the kids uh, someone to relate to. Whatever kind of kid is watching, they're going to relate to at least one of them. That's right. You know? You know, maybe it's a good thing that Higley Town here, was, you, know, if Twink, well, you know, if Twinkle can have as much screen, pre if Twinkle as the, the only girl in the, in the ensemble can have as much screen presence as the other, th to balance out, the, can have enough screen presence to, to balance out the other three boys, maybe it's a good thing that Higley Town Heroes didn't have another girl main character because even if they weren't because even if they weren't a tomboyish girl they'd still they'd still they might still feel like such a thing they might feel like such they might they might seem like they might just seem tomboyish in comparison to Twinkle being the oh. girliest uh, kid of the group yeah, if she's the girliest, another girl would seem tomboyish compared to her. Yeah, 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 I guess. Um, oh, would you like me to tell you what the other, th would you like me to tell you what the, uh, would you like me to t t tell you what the, uh, I mean, uh, you know, I noticed that, you know, in Hitley's Down Heroes, you know, the, all four of the main kids are voiced by people who are, are voice backers who actually were kids, and, 2004, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, they voiced on Fall 65 episodes, as far as I know, they didn't get, n none of them got too old to voice their character and had to get recast in between, in the two or three seasons that, that they've had. Mm hmm So, what, so, what I'd, what I'd really like to ask you is, um, well, did you know that Liliana and Mumi is the only one of the four main Higley Tony Heroes kids who still has a regular acting career today? Oh yeah, I think you mentioned that before. That's interesting. Not not all uh, child actors go on to do that as an adult, so I'm not surprised. Well, I know it sure helps that girls' voices change less during QB than boys' voices. Yeah, the boy might not have the kind of voice meant for voice acting as an adult because it changes so much. Well, I think that's how I think that is how come Liliana Mumi and Claire Curlette are still voice acting after. Dinosaur Train and and Seth, you know that Liliana's brother Seth Mooney and Claire's Claire Margaret Corlett's brother Philip Corlett are not. Yeah, this I'm sure there's a factor. That's such a bummer. Yeah. But would you still like to hear what the other three boys are doing now? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well. Um. Okay. Well, you see, uh, Roy. Roy <clears throat> uh. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah, so yeah, Twinkle is, so yeah, Twinkle is my most favorite character Lily Anna movie has played, and, and Pizza Guy, and you know, Dee Bradley Baker plays hundreds of cartoon characters, but Pizza Guy is actually my most favorite character that Dee Bradley Baker has played. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, uh, even if, and, you know, he's, uh, he's easily top five best material. Mm hmm If you, if you're not counting all the animated Animal characters voice were just animal noises like Perry the Planet Plus or Vains and Ferb or Appa mm -hmm. and Momo from Avatar the Last Airbender. Mm -hmm. 
And, uh, you know, Fran's also, uh, you know, Fran's also one of my most favorite Edie McClurg characters. But on to the, what the three boys of Higley Town Heroes are, are doing now. Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, let's, let's see. Rory Charles Thost, who voices Kip, mm -hmm. he's, uh, Kip is a, Kip's actor is a documentary filmmaker oh. who, uh, yeah, he, he's a documentary filmmaker who, uh, helps, uh, who makes, uh, who films, uh, you know, stories around the world, you know, a variety of stories in different nations that aren't U.S. centric, you know, for both U.S. audiences and audiences around the globe. And, uh, you know, he knows that we can, he knows that anyone around the world can relate to having a, you know, a story about wanting to stop corruption and restore democracy so we can have uh, public Medicare for everybody. That's awesome. And, uh... Yeah, so he's, he's in the business, but... And in a creative capacity and behind the scenes. Okay, then what about the other two? Okay, let's see. Well, you know, I really think Taylor Masamitsu and Rory Charles Stost, they probably should have, and I know they could have... They could have switched roles to match the skin color of the characters they were voicing. You, you, you've been Kip. I'm pretty sure those two boys are are uh, almost there, basically interchangeable. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um... Well, maybe Taylor got the part of, well, maybe they, well, maybe they all auditioned for all the different boys, just like how, you know, Jennifer Aniston and Courtney Cox auditioned for different parts in Friends, or... And they're right, and... Yardley Smith and uh, Nancy Cartwright also auditioned for different kids in The Simpsons. Right, but the casting director decided who fit the part better. Yeah, I think Taylor Masamitsu just got to voice Yubi because Yubi's bigger and Taylor had a lower voice than Rory Charles Thost. Okay, that's an obvious answer, yeah. Lower voice, older kid. Mm -hmm. Or taller kid. Well, taller, yeah, taller, seeming older, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it would be weird for the low voice to come from the little, little, yeah. little kid, right? Right. Okay, that, that's must, must be it then. Um, oh yeah, so, Taylor Masamitsu, um, he's this, oh, well, he's the, he's the CEO of this, uh, progressive folk, business called Change for Justice. Oh, wow. And if you, uh, yeah, he's uh, there to help, yeah, much like a, in a, in a diff in similar yet different way to Roy Charles Thost's job. They really took this Higleytown Heroes to heart to become, you know, heroes as adults, right? Because I knew they... The kind of professions they're doing. That's awesome. I knew they would. Yeah, that's great. I know they'll have it in their hearts to, to, uh, not turn into a serial killer like uh, oh. some messed, like some messed up kid actors. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of kid actors get messed up. Um, but that's I think more for live acting. You, you'd hardly ever see a voice actor get like a swelled head and get real spoiled and, and messed up in that way. True, but Wayne and Twinkle's actors are known for a few live action roles in their childhood too, because because Frankie Ryan Enriquez was in the TV shows oh. Life with Bonnie and That's So Raven and. You know the and Liliana Mumi was in, was in, she was in uh, the Santa Claus Two, Cheaper by the Dozen, the Santa Claus Three, Escape Clause, and Cheaper by the Dozen Two. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! So she's pretty busy during the Town Heroes years. And they're 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 remaking Cheaper by the Dozen again. You think there'll be any cameos from the previous cast? Um, I don't know. There could be. Wait, a minute, back back to the topic. What about the other child actor? Oh yeah, Jack, child voice yeah, actor. yeah. The thing with. With the change for justice, unless I'm remembering that name incorrectly, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's it's there to uh, yeah. What Taylor Masamitsu does, you know, not not to be confused with Tiramisu, right? Yeah, what what Taylor what uh, Taylor Masamitsu's business does is to uh, you know give che give uh, you know cheap uh, easily uh, affordable lessons to. Uh, you know, to uh, people of uh, all races and backgrounds who uh, who want to learn music or acting. Like, for mm -hmm. example, he actually he's going to. You could pay you you know, you could pay Taylor Masamitsu a dollar for a thirty for a thirty minute the uh, 
music singing lesson. Wow. Voice, voice, yeah, voice lessons. That's great. It. Making it accessible to all. Yeah, you know, I think that's a, you know, I noticed that Higley Town Heroes had an original song in every episode before the someone special song that they sing at the end when they went to Higley Town Heroes show up. Right, that's a song about each hero, right? Yeah, but there's also, yeah, but they also, ha but each story also has their own song before they introduce the hero. Oh, like about what's going on in the story. Yes. That's great. And speaking of music, that that uh, you know, that's a perfect segue to uh, our last uh, to uh, our last bo boy, uh -huh. Nick Heroes, uh, Frankie Ryan Enriquez. Okay. The last I saw of him was uh, he was in this reunion of the, the Secrets, this October twenty twenty Zoom reunion with uh, the you know the with uh, you know uh, with uh, the cast members of the, with still uh, alive cast members of The Secrets of Jonathan Sperry, they had, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're like, uh, you know, Gavin McLeod and Jansen Pantier were also there. Wow. And, you know, uh, you know Jansen Pantier, you know, he still does some uh, acting uh, things now, and he's, he's an artist, like, he likes paintings for, I think he, he's, I think he makes paintings for Instagram or Twitter. Cool. What did you find out from the Zoom meeting about our Higley Town Hero act, voice actor? Oh yeah. So about Frankie Ryan Manriquez, mm -hmm. he's a music artist now. He mm. named Band Aid, spelled B A N D A D E, not like Band Aids you put on cuts like that start A I D. Like a drink. <laughs> yeah, like I think that's very clever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's a music artist named Band Aid, and you can look for him on Spotify. Cool. And he's and you know I think it's kind of nice that he's that he plays uh, Liliana's sister in Higley Town Heroes because they're only forty three days apart in age. He was born on Pi Day, March fourteenth. Mhm. Mm wow, that's great. And you know, considering that Frankie records his own songs for a living, I think he's. You know, I've always wanted to. I always wished I could have him voice act again with Liliana Mumi or other new actors who have probably shared credits with her in Bravest Warriors or The Loud House or Sophia the First or. Fresh off the boat, and that's why, uh, you know. But you know, knowing that Frankie Ryan Enriquez records his uh, that that Frankie Ryan Enriquez, uh, you know, records and sings his own songs that we could look for on Spotify. He's probably mm -hmm. the most likely. He's probably the most likely one I, I could get to voice act again in young adulthood. Yeah, maybe. You know, it's because uh, voice acting shouldn't be much hard. Reading a script shouldn't be any harder than. Recording and singing your own songs on Spotify. Mm hmm You know, yeah, all in all, I think it's really nice that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that they're all, that, uh, I'm really, I think it's really nice that all, that all of our, all four of our main child actors of Higley Town Heroes have grown up to be Higley Town Heroes in real life. That is great, yeah. So, uh, do you think Willian and Mumi still a Higley Town hero? Because I haven't really heard from. I actually looked into it. I don't really know if she has any other job outside of voice acting. Voice acting is. is she never actually never talks about it. Voice acting is fine, good enough. Yeah. That's good. Well, she's been a lot. Well, she's, even though she's been a lot for half a decade, I still think Lillian and Mumi could do better, and I hope, and I hope she looks for new acting roles anytime soon after. Her most recent non the Loud House acting roles in Fresh Off the Boat and Sophia the First. Well, I'm sure she and her agent are working on that. Do you think her agent will like my plans for an Earth Day reunion two years from now? I'm going to give Liliana the chance she deserves to have Twinkle be a Higley Town hero, which she never got to do in Italy Higley Town Heroes final episode. Sounds like a good idea. You know, sounds good to me. I can't speak for her schedule or her inclinations, but it sounds like a good idea. Okay. Well, yeah. I hope. Yeah. Hopefully, her agent and the and the producers of the executive producers of Wild Brain will approve of my of my idea to have a reunion at Hidley, at, at a Hidley Town Heroes reunion at Liliana's house where the voice actors who play characters in the script all get to read it at a long table. Well, probably should be in like a neutral spot rather than her house. Okay. Unless everybody's zooming from their respective house. It should be some, some oh, neutral third place. Oh, it'll be less fun that way if, if they zoom. Well, it's probably in person, right? 
people are doing stuff in person again. It's yeah, that's what it. they should do in 2024. So it's probably going to be at some, you know, third-party spot. You can't invite yourself into someone's house. I understand. Okay, the reunion is probably going to be a neutral ground, right? Right. Because otherwise, why should it be her place or this other person's place? Or how would you pick which place? You know, I mean, yeah, no, it's, it should be in a neutral place. A place of business. Or, you know, whether it's... A new neutral ground, rather than, yeah. rather than unless, I mean, unless one of the people involved volunteers their house, no, it should be in a neutral, it should be a neutral territory. Yeah. Okay? It's, it's up to the host to, to want to, ho to volunteer to host. Understood, right? yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, some neutral ground. And there's plenty of show business spaces, you know, um, plenty. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, if if Liliana Mumi has a, if Liliana Mumi has like a, for example, it could be at a like com some place like Comic Con or some other con. Oh yeah, okay. Right. Right. Well, you know, I think if Liliana Mumi in real life has a very wild brain like like uh, Twinkle, mm -hmm. she could use that to devise pl to devise imaginative plans to. Save the world, or to save the the democracy of the United States of America. Sure, remember she's playing a character. She is not her character. Well, that's well, that's what, that's what I would normally think. But you know, I've read about her. You know, like, but you know, I I've read her. Uh, I've read her Lisa Frank post interview, and mm -hmm. I know she actually does have a lot of similarities to oh. Twinkle in real life. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Well, you never know. Um, you know, I bet Lily. I think Liliana Mumi could come up with a terrific plan to make YouTube the, the free independent video site she it, that it, it once was. Um, that'd be great. Yeah. Here's what I th Here's what I bet she'd probably draw up. I think she'd go. Ooh, ooh. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Uh. Well. Okay, maybe she. Okay, maybe she'd come up with something better. But here's what I. Th but here's what I like to do to to make YouTube good again. You sure you want this to be the same video, not a separate video? Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure this is already a separate video. I looked at my watch. You now the camera automatically splits to two parts after twenty. The automatically starts doing video after twenty three minutes and forty five seconds. Oh. One second of recording. I see. Well. Yeah, it's always terrible when it, it's always terrible when a, it's always terrible when a, when a, a new manager or even, or even especially if it's or especially if it's the same original manager wants to you know tries to come up with a new less functional business model that goes against the original principles and integrity that founded and started up the company. Yeah, what's like your, what's your point? Well, in Martha blah blah you know, a Martha Speaks book in an episode, Granny Flo, you know, the new manager of Gra Granny at Elsie's Alphabet Soup. I haven't seen Martha Speaks. Oh, well, I still think you'll get the point of what I'm trying to, to of, of the message, what I'm trying to tell you. She got, uh, well, she wanted to, uh, she wanted to cut costs by hot firing half of the people who make the letters that 